What's up guys? It's Tony Holiday. Back at it again, another video. Today I wanna to talk to you about the basics of automation in Logic Pro. Automation is something that you can use to add lots of color and sort of flavor and really bring your track to life. And if you don't know anything about automation, then this tutorial is gonna be really great for you because it's gonna go over just the kind of basics and some simple tips and tricks for you to add little flavors to your track. Let's get right into the tutorial and I'm gonna show you guys how to use automation in Logic Pro and just some basic tips and tricks on how to go about using it. Let's get into the video. So what is automation? Automation is basically programming your computer to affect certain parameters while the track plays on, if that makes sense. If you had a channel EQ or volume and you want them to change levels throughout the track or change the frequency that they affect, you can automate Logic Pro to make those changes for you while the track plays. Think about it if you were to do it live, say if you had like a keyboard or a synthesizer and you're gonna be twisting knobs and such. Well, if you have even more than just two or three tracks, it would be pretty hard for you to do that on your own, twisting knobs and making sure that the sounds are affecting the way you want. And then even if you screwed that up, then you'd have to start all over if you're recording that automation in there. So that's why automation is a really powerful tool is you can go track by track and the computer will change them all for you as the track goes. So what I have here to start you guys is just this kind of little house track that I built. It's just 120 BPM. And what it has is a little intro here, which is just uh, these bars from the fifth bar onwards up to 13. This is gonna be kind of like a little buildup that's gonna go into the chorus. After that, it's gonna be a little chorus section. And then from 21 to 25, this is just a Boomer FX 35. It's just like an impact to kind of go out on the track. So we're going to actually start with the build up here at the fifth bar. And to go into automation mode in Logic, what you can do on your keyboard is press A. And then that's going to open up this window here. Now I've already programmed different automation clips in here. I'll show you kind of what those do and why I put them in the specific spots. Um, a little bit later after this. Also, if you don't want to press A on your keyboard for the hotkey, you can press this button up here and you can open that up and it'll open up automation for you. The top tracks here, the yellow ones, these are gonna be the kind of drum tracks. This green one is a drum track as well and it's MIDI and I'll tell you why I used MIDI in a bit there as well. These pink ones are gonna be kind of the main synths. These blue ones down here are just uh, different risers and down sweeps and such. I'm gonna go at these track by track and show you what I did with each automation. And we can start with this gear alignment topper. Now, as you can see, there's this blue line here. And that's what the automation is. And it's actually telling this high frequency to kind of move about as the track goes on. I'm gonna solo the track so you can hear what I've done with the automation and then I'll explain it afterwards and show you guys. It's very subtle, but what I've done here is I've actually taken the channel EQ, the high cut, which is gonna be this pink one here, and as this track goes from the ninth bar up to the 13th, it's actually going to take the high cut and give more and more high frequencies as it goes on. Now, this is great for a buildup because when you have a buildup going, you kind of want it to start small and get the, interest, the listener interested as to what's going to happen and then slowly add more and more and more and more sound until you cut it off and then you go into the chorus or the drop or whatever. If I move the playhead to the ninth bar here, you can see the high cut is down to um, 5750. And then as I drag this along here, the high cut actually moves with the playhead. That's what I've done via this automation clip here. Now to create an automation clip, let's say if we wanted to do it in this area, all you need to do is click to make a little dot and click to make another dot. And then you can move that from there to the different frequency. You can double click each dot and that'll get rid of the dot as well. You can also go up here to where it says automation select tool under your right click, and then you can hold command and then select the automation that way. What I've also done in this one is if I make this track a little bit bigger, you can see that it's kind of a little curve. It's not just a straight line like it does from the 20,000 Hertz down to the 5,700 here. What I've done with that is I've gone to automation curve tool under the right click, which is this button here. You can press command. And then if you grab in the middle of these automation lines, you can actually drag it to make it a curve. What that's gonna do is rather than just a steady, gradual linear curve going on the way up, it'll kind of stay low, stay low, and then it'll go up all at once. Or you can do the other way around where it goes up really fast at the same time. So moving on from the, the topper here, that one's a little bit subtle. So let's go to something a little more 
um, busy that you can listen to here. You can see these Neon Dream synth chords. I'm gonna solo this one, and what I've done is I've automated the volume. So it starts at negative 6.7 dB, and then it goes up to negative 0.1 dB. So I've soloed this, let's take a listen to what it sounds like as the volume increases. So you can see when we started down here, it was quite quiet. By the time we got to here, it was much louder. And again, that's kind of adding to the buildup here. So again, what we're doing is we're taking a certain parameter of the track, we're automating it to change as the track plays on to kind of give more life into the track. Now, as you can see throughout the buildup here, I've done it to a few things. So I had the topper, I did the high cut frequency. I did the volume on this track. This one, I did a high shelf gain and that's a different synth. And then these risers, I did again, a high cut frequency where I moved it up. You can quite literally automate any parameter that you can change manually in Logic. For example, if I go to this night vision synth here and I click the high shelf gain, which is what I changed, it actually has this use section. So that's the only one that I've actually affected on that track. You can see here under automation, you can go smart controls, volume. Main is to kind of turn things on and off. And then I have all the different effects here, including the original synth, and I can change pretty much any parameter I want. I'm gonna show you this one here as well. And something that I want you to take note of is if I open up the channel EQ here and then I'll play this section for you, you can see there's nothing on it at this point. If I play it, you can actually watch in real time as the automation takes place. This high shelf is gonna increase in gain by the time we get to the 13th bar. So let's play this and I'll show you what I mean. And you see at the end where this cut right back down to zero there, as you can see in the channel EQ as well, the high shelf gain just disappeared. You can also take note of that on the side here under the EQ thumbnail. Watch as I move this playhead, I won't play it, but if you just watch this EQ thumbnail here, it'll actually show up there as well. Again, just a cool way for you to kind of take note of the automation that's going on in the track when you're in mixing. These uh, risers here, what I've done here is again, the same thing that I did at the top with the uh, gear alignment topper, is I just made the high cut frequency kind of open up over time. It's making room for those high frequencies to come into the track right before we drop it. So let's actually just play this uh, build up for you guys here. And you can hear how the things kind of work together to essentially bring you the whole track. Now the next section and another little tip trick I want to show you guys, which is really cool, goes from this chorus section here. You can see this beginning part, the only thing I have going here is the bass. And then once it gets to the 15th, it actually drops the rest of the track. Now this automation is pretty cool and can really make your choruses nice and big, especially if you're just building up to it with a nice little build up. What I've done here is if I go to my automation menu, you can see I used volume, send mute one to widening bus, which is a bus I created, I'll show you in a moment and then also gain, make mono. So let's start with the volume. So I made it a little bit louder here before the actual big drop of the chorus, and I'll explain why in just a moment. The send mute one, now this is probably the one that has the biggest effect on this track. So what I've done here is I made this bus one. It's a polyverse wider, which has about 80% on there, and then a channel EQ in processing is side only and I put the high shelf way up from 840 hertz on. You can see here if I go to 13, where this um, automation clip is, it's turned on, and what it's done is it's actually muted the bus. So take a look at bus one here, it's grayed out. As soon as I pass to 15, the bus is turned on at zero decibels. So this is really cool, because what this is doing is this first part here is it's actually gonna be in mono. And that's what this gain plugin is doing as well with this uh, four gain make mono, which I've done the same thing. I've turned it on all the way up to the 15th. So this is gonna be in mono from the 13th to the 15th bar. And then as soon as the big drop comes with all the rest of the drums and all that stuff, I actually bring it into stereo. It makes it sound a lot bigger, wider, just kind of that nice crispy high-end bass all the way out to the sides there. The first part, like I said, with the volume, I turned it up a little bit because it's not as big and as wide, 
but I just want you to still be able to hear it in mono. I'm gonna play this and you can kind of take a listen to what it would sound like as if you come out of this uh, build up here and then you go into the chorus, that little breakdown part where there's just in mono, and then it goes into the big chorus where it widens the bass out. And it's the main focal point of the track basically. So watch the bus one turn on as it gets to 15. <laughs> Really subtle, but a great way for you to keep your listener engaged and interested in your track. Because if you just give them the whole bass right away, they're probably not gonna stick around for the rest of it if you're just gonna add some drums and such. And then the last thing here, guys, what I have on the end part under the Boomer FX35 is I just added a volume clip. And what it does, it actually gets louder as the track kind of finishes off. And then I also did the same thing as I did on that uh, drop piece with the bass is I turned the uh, widening bus up here. Take a look at the track closer. You can see that the impact, as it typically does, is a kick drum and then white noise and it just kind of finishes off. <laughs> These are all basic, simple automation tips, but like I was saying, subtly, if you add them all into your track, it can really make a difference and bring your track to life. This is kind of the automation in the actual track view, but I added this MIDI uh, hi-hat here as well. We'll just take a really quick listen to that. Just a simple hi-hat pattern, but it kind of has some groove to it and some feel to it. And what you can do as well is instead of just being in the track view with automation, if I double click into the piano roll with the MIDI clip and I press A here, or also press the same button, this one, it actually brings up the automation for each MIDI note. And you can see all these MIDI notes here are different colors, and that's actually symbolizing the different velocities that they have. Down in this section here, these little dots are representing the velocity levels of the hi-hat. So if I click this first one here, it's gonna highlight this dot, and I can move it up or down, and as you can see on the track, it changes the color of the velocity so that it gives it a different velocity than the next one. Now these are all so different, and that what kind of emulates how you would literally play a hi-hat. You're never gonna hit something the exact same velocity, and that's kind of the realism of music production, is you are trying to get it back to sounding like a real instrument. There's also lots of different parameters in here as well, so you can go through these ones, um, but I typically just use the note velocity or pitch bending. But other than that, I uh, usually kind of just stick to the track automation in this area. So the last thing I'm gonna do guys, I'm just gonna play you this track start to finish, and I'll kind of click through the plugins as they go about the automation so you can see them happening in real time. That way you can kind of get a good idea of how you could implement it into a whole track and give your track some more life. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for me. That's how you can take some basic automation tips and tricks, implement them into your track, and essentially just give your track some more life and make it work together. Make the track you know, have some evolution in it and don't just add four bar loops and take them out because very sudden, just big loops that come in at full volume, the listener's gonna listen to that and it just sounds like you've thrown a piece of the puzzle in there. You wanna subtly add them into the track take them away, and automation is an excellent way to do that. If you like this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe. I'm gonna be putting out more videos, and I've started a blog as well to kind of go over some things about music production, so check that out in the description. Give me a follow on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.